This is a good example of a parking lot that's been sealed. The black stuff on it was painted on who knows how many years ago. And you can see that it's, it's over the years it's worn off. And one of the big questions that we have is what's in that sealant? And then where does it go when it wears off? Turns out that most parking lot sealants or many parking lot sealants, a large component of them, like 25 to 35% is coal tar. And coal tar has a very huge amount, like 60% of a type of contaminant called, we call PAHs, which stands for polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. And the important thing to know about most PAHs is that they're carcinogenic. For example, benzoapyrene, which is a cancer-causing agent in cigarettes, is a PAH. So coal tar is chock full of PAHs, and it's a major constituent of most parking lot sealants, and that's what we paint on the parking lots. So this is something that is a considered a hazardous material, coal tar, and yet we're paving parking lots with it. That's well and good, except it doesn't stay on the parking lot. And as a matter of fact, you can see here that there's large areas where little bits of the parking lot sealant have abraded away, and they wash off the parking lot and they wash into the storm sewers. PAHs are the largest group of known carcinogens. Uh, carcinogenic means that it causes cancer. They're also mutagenic, meaning they cause mutations at the genetic level, and they're also toxic, they're poisonous. So we do know, for example, that um, workers in the roofing industry or in industries that use coal tar a lot have higher incidences of lung cancer. And we do have documented cases where people whose skin has been exposed to coal tar have developed to skin cancer. So there is definitely a known link between PAH, PAHs and, and cancer in a, a range of different organisms. It's important to realize that all the water in this pool is coming out of Barton Springs. It's not coming out of the creek that's just upstream of us. That water is rooted around the pool by a bypass. The high concentrations of PAHs are on the sediment that's in Barton Creek. Now the implication for Barton Springs pool is that when we get a really high rain, the creek level rises up high enough that it overtops the dam and it dumps that contaminated sediment into Barton Springs pool and that's when we do see high concentrations of PAHs on the sediment in the pool but it's not coming out of Barton Springs, not yet at least. In addition to PAHs, researchers are now finding a new class of emerging contaminants in our water. Emerging contaminants are chemicals that we use in everyday life that we're just now starting to recognize could be contaminants and that we do find in our water systems in the United States. These can include things like uh, pharmaceuticals, medications that we take, everything from um, oh, Tylenol to hormone products, birth control pills, or really anything that, um, anything penicillin that you take into your body gets excreted and it goes into our wastewater system and it has the potential to be found in our groundwater and surface water systems. Other examples of emerging contaminants are surfactants, which are those things that we put in detergents to make bubbles and, and take dirt out of our clothes. Yet a third category of emerging contaminants are fragrances. So we put fragrances in our personal care products, our shampoo and our deodorant, and when we take a shower, they go down the drain along with everything else. We put them in soaps, uh, we put them in all kinds of different things. And fragrances, there are some fragrances that are thought to perhaps have adverse health consequences. So fragrances, surfactants, pharmaceuticals, these are all emerging contaminants that we are starting to be able to detect now, and we do find them in our surface and groundwater systems. Is this just an isolated issue that only affects Austin, Texas? Or are there other parts of the U.S. where groundwater contamination may also be an important issue? Parking lot sealants are used all over the United States. In fact, um, in the Northeast, particular areas around the Great Lakes, um, sealants are much more prevalent than they are here in Austin. About 25% of the drinking water in the United States comes, of, of ground, drinking water from groundwater in the United States comes from karst aquifers. We find karst in Florida, we find karst in Missouri, we find karst in Pennsylvania. Um, there are karst aquifers all over the United States, and in fact there are karst aquifers all over the world. We can use what we learn here at Barton Springs and 
apply that to other karst aquifers. Obviously, every aquifer is going to have its own vagaries and it's going to have its own idiosyncrasies. But there are certain generalizations, I think, that, that we can take from what we learned here at Barton Springs that we can apply to water quality protection in other places.